Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. You can learn it and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery to get it done if you like the show. Please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. Well, friend, we're back, and it is Sunday afternoon on a beautiful afternoon here by the river, and I am sitting here with my main man, Dennis McDonald. Welcome, Tata. Thank you. Welcome. I'm glad to be, I'm glad to be here. It's good to have you back on the show, and, and friend, Harvey and Lewis are sleeping over here. We got Lisa hanging out with us today, and it is obviously Tuesdays with Tata. Yeah, yeah, but I have to take a caveat here. Uh, apparently, there's something in the air that is bothering us. Yep. It's in our eyes and in our nasal cavities. Uh, Everybody's been sneezing. Even Harvey was sneezing this yeah, morning. Yeah, Woke yeah. himself up sneezing at 3 o'clock this morning. Crazy. Yes. Plus the farmers have been cutting hay and there's all kinds of... Who knows what's in the air out there? Yeah, absolutely. They're harvesting corn. So there's feed dust in the air as well. But I do know there's going to be some good theology in here this afternoon. So yeah. what you got for us today, Tata? Well... And I would like I would like to look at uh, with you with uh, with our friends is uh, Revelations twenty, and, and and just just a little thought about the, the the book of Revelations. John was in in the, in the spirit on the Isle of Patmos, and he had a vision. Now, and I know that there's all kinds of uh, commentary that's been made about the about the book that it's symbolic and that none of it is really true. But let me ask you this. We're going to close our eyes here, and we're going to open our eyes there. That's right. And so what will we see? We're going to see the new heaven. Uh, amen. And the amen. new earth. And, and, in the, and, and in the chapter of uh, ch- chapter 20 of Revelation, uh, uh, it talks about the thousand years. Now, is that the, the, the time of tribulation? I can't, I can't address that. I, I, have, I have opinions about that. I have opinions about a lot of these things, but... But all, what, what I want to do when I look at the book of Revelations, I want to try to understand. Yeah. And that's what I ask God to do. Help me understand. Speak to me. But help me understand. Yep. So it's not, not foreign to me. That's right. So in the, in the book of Revelations, of, of chapter 20 in, in Revelations, uh, there's, several, there's several pictures that we have. One is the, is the thousand years that, of, of, of rain that... Uh, that John talks about, then, and also the defeat of Satan, and then also the judgment. And this is what I want to focus on, and I'll just give you a thought about what, what happens in my mind at, at when, when, we face, when we're faced with the, with the day of judgment. The first thing that we see is where everybody's assembled there, yep. before the throne, and the, the books are opened. Yeah. And those people are judged by those by, by those books, and 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 what we ha- that picture that we have there is of those people that are judged by the books are are, are sent away into Hades, into the lake of fire, and and also a book is opened, and if your name is found in that book, then you go to heaven. That's right. So the, the, there's several questions about the, the book, and and please know that. The inspiration for this doesn't come from me. It comes from our old pastor in Alabama who Chris talked Hodges. about that. Yeah. He talked about the book, and he wanted to make sure that his name was in the book. Yep. And I do, too. I, hadn't, I had thought about that, but I had not given it an in-depth, in-depth thought that, that I probably should have, should have in thinking about that. And so what do we know about the book? 
is the Lamb's book, the yeah. book of life. That's right. And it's Jesus Christ's book. He's the author. It's his book. That's right. How do we get in that book? We've been talking about books now for some time. Yeah. And, we, and one of the books that you have out is, 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 has caused a lot of attention. And, and that's rightfully so. Yeah. I'm thankful for that. That's what we've prayed for. Yeah. I mean, and you and I have even talked about once, if it's even just one that finds hope. That's right. That's enough. Then it's worth it. That's right. That's right. All of the effort and all of the time and all of the energy and all the money is, and is worth it if one is found. That's right. And why do we say that? Because what did the shepherd do when one sheep was lost? That's right. He went out and found, left the 99 and went out and found the one. <laughs> That's correct. That's right. And so how do we get, and so one of the things that I know is that I know you and you're the author of that book. Yeah. And if I find my name in your book, I would be thankful for that. Yeah. And I would be honored by that. And you did. And if I find my name <laughs> in the Lamb's book of life, that's very important to me. That's right. It's way more important than being in my book. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that whole, whole point is this. And how, the, the question that, that you need to know several things. What is the book? What is the book of life? Who is the, what is the Lamb's book of life? Who is the author of that book? Who owns that book? And how do we get our name in that book? <clears throat> That's right. I want my name in that book. That's right. Because it's pretty clear here. You're either going to be judged according to the deeds that were written in the books, the other two books. That's right. Or however many. It says the books. It says, actually, to be perfectly accurate, it says in verse 12, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. So there were some books yes. that the dead were judged according to their deeds that were written in the books. And then down at the bottom it says, and anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Right. So you either get to be judged according to your deeds or according to whether your name was in the book. That's right. I want my name in the book. Amen. That's right. <laughs> and, so that, and so how do we get our name in the book? In my mind, it's very simple. All you have to do is say yes. Say yes to Jesus. That's right. And ask him to be your savior. And ask him to be our be Lord of our lives. And that's what we do. And because in, in verse 27 of chapter 21, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who does not, who does what is detestable, detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. And, they, and there, the picture is of the new Jerusalem. That's right. Of, of, of where, where God is. And because God said he would be with his people. And, and all of those things and all of those promises are very important to all of us. That's right. No more tears, no more sadness, no more. And, no, and, and God will wipe away our tears and we'll live forever. Yeah. I, I, don't have, I don't have a comprehension of that. What does that mean? What does that look like? I can't describe it. But when you think about having your name in the book, that's the most important part of it. That's right. right. Because you don't get to experience the life if your name's not in the book. That's right. That's right. And so in our struggle and, and all of the struggle and the pain and the sorrow that we have today, that we have to stop and think about what is the most important part of all of it. Having your name in the book. That's right. The Lamb's Book of Life. That's right. And that's where I want my name. That's right. And as, as we struggle and as we are disappointed in this life, all, we, we can think about, and that's where our hope is. Mm -hmm. And the writer of Hebrews talks about faith, <clears throat> and faith is defined as, as hope for something that's unseen, hoping in something that we can't see or know or yeah. understand. That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> but anyway, the whole point is this. Uh, after it's all said and done, and this is the final, 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 final right here. Yep. And that John is describing in Revelations, where the book is opened. 
That's right. And your name has to be in the book. That's right. So it kind of boils down the importance of all the things we strive for all these days of our lives, That's doesn't right. it? That's right. If you haven't made sure of that one thing, you don't punch your ticket. We don't, we don't punch it ourselves, of course, but, but if we don't have our name in that book, then everything else is just vain. Absolutely. And, and, and many times that's addressed. But in our finite mind, we cannot understand that. We have no comprehension of it. But infinitely, in God's infinite mind, He knows that picture. He knows what it looks like. He knows the beginning and He knows the ending. And really, this doesn't address an ending. It addresses a beginning. That's right. Because God wants us all home. Yes, He does. He's, he's not willing that any should be, perish. That's right. But He knows that some will because the, the, the record is kept. And the one book... That's the most important part. Now, where is that one book kept? I don't know. In heaven? How do we? And, and, but the main thing you want, we need to know is how do we get our name in that book? And what do we have to do to keep it in that book? We're going we're gonna to fling a little controversy around in here on Tuesdays at the top, aren't we? Right. Getting, we're, getting ready to, we're getting ready to get in it, aren't we? That's, how do we get the name in the book, Tata? Yeah. Well, all we have to say, is, all we have to do is say yes. That's right. Say yes to Jesus and ask him to be our Lord and Savior. That's right. Yeah. And then what do we have to do to keep our name in the book? Nothing. That's right. Once he saves us, and here again, I think... I think some of our friends before, that, and I grew, uh, the traditions that I grew up in and, and, the, and the circumstances that I grew up in, where they talked about that once saved, always saved, maybe they had it right. I don't know. Maybe. Well, the tradition I grew up in, it was you always had one foot in heaven and one foot in hell. <laughs> I know. And I, you better hope there's not a banana peel on the <laughs> heaven side. It was like constantly back and forth. Like you constantly were worried about your salvation and and the Bible makes it clear. Jesus makes it clear. No one will snatch them out of my hand. That's right. No because, one. And think about it. When the disciples came to Jesus and asked us, what work do we have to do to be saved? What did he say? Believe. You believe. That's just, right. Just believe. And he said, anybody who confesses my name before men, I will confess them before my father. That's right. That's right. He's our advocate. Now, now will we continue to sin? Absolutely. Yes, we will. And John, and John, and, and his books, uh, he makes makes it very clear. He makes it very crystal clear that if we ask, God will forgive us of our sins. That's right. And and I, I know that and I know I know that and I've been challenged on this before, but uh, I'm I'm very thankful that God is mindful of me, and that he that I he even counts me worthy of his passing glance. That's right. I, I, I count that. I count that. I count myself blessed and highly favored. But I know this: that sin lurks in my heart, sin lurks in my mind, sin lurks in my eyes, and it will lurk in my body as long as I have breath. That's right. But at the end, I want my name in the book. In the book. I think we forget sometimes, we spend our lives sometimes worrying about things that God's already settled. Susie Larson said, in fact, on the podcast in her uh, new book, uh, Closer Than Your Next Breath, she said this. I'm going to give you a quote here. We're prone to rehearse the things God has decidedly forgotten. That's right. That's right. And we're just as apt to forget the things God has distinctly asked us to remember. That's right. And I think of Isaiah when, when he said, come now. Let us settle the matter. That's right. Though your sins were as scarlet, I have washed them white as snow. He's saying, stop. He's not saying, don't worry about sin. He's saying, don't worry about the fact that I promised you I'm going to save you. I'm going right. to take care of you. That's right. And he wants us to live a, a, a holy life. That's we're, right. we're to be transformed. The old is gone, the new has come, and we, we have a transformed life, a holy life. That's right. But we don't have to wonder every day if he's going to keep his promise or not. No, that's, that's correct. And, 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 and please know that, 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 that I am, uh, you, as we sit right here, that I am, I'm a mere mortal. I'm a, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Now, do I remember my sins? Yes. Do I rehearse them? No. 
That's right. Do I nourish them? No. But I remember them. But I don't need to remember them. God has already forgotten them. That's right. You're reminding him of stuff he's already forgotten and he paid for with his own blood. That's right. He's like, really, you want to bring that up again? Yeah, yeah. I, that's the picture I have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to get into a debate with him about that. No. He already told you what he thinks about it. Come now, let us settle the matter. That's right. Even though your sins are as red as crimson, I'll make you like, like wool. The thing is, if we focus on our sin and we worry about whether or not our name's in the book when he's already written in there with the pen dipped in his own blood, then we forget the power that we have access to. We have the the fruit of this. We have the Holy Spirit of God inside us. That's right. And his fruit that he bears in our life is love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He says in Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Absolutely. And if you're not living in goodness and mercy, then you're not following the way he has poured out for you. That's right. And so he's asking us to live in the fact that we know he's written our name in his book. And therefore, the deeds in the past are going to be blotted out. That's right. And, and every writer, and beginning with Paul and, and Peter, uh, James even mentions as well, that passion or lust of the eyes or lust of the flesh is what causes sin. That's right. It, it causes us to look to sin. And, and what happens sometimes, we may say to ourselves, well, this is not a big sin. That's right. It's a little sin. Yeah. But what did God say about sin? Yeah. <laughs> if they're not big and they're not little, they're the same size. You can't look on it. Yeah, that's right. He will not accept it. So the bottom line is we've been forgiven of our sins and Jesus paid a high price for them. And he's written your name in their book if you believe in him and nobody can snatch you out. So that should transform your life that's right. and should change the things you think about and the things that you want. There's going to be some accounting of our deeds. There will. And Paul talked about that, how some, some people's work is going to be burned up that's like right. the that's straw. Right. And they're going to get in sort of by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, well, that's right. They, right. They'll have smoke on their, on their clothing. That's right. But we don't want that, obviously. We want to live a life that, that honors God and tries to help other people see the benefit of living this transformed life. But I think it starts, I think you're right, it starts by being confident and what he's already done for us, right. and not to forget it, and to stop being confident in the things that he already told us to forget about. That's right. That's right. Quit relying on them. That's right. Quit looking back at them. Because ultimately, that's a form of idolatry. Uh, you're, you're basically <clears throat> making your performance bigger than God. That's right. That's right. And, and if, we, if we have to believe, if all we have to do is believe, then there's no other work to do. That's right. What work, what work could we do for God anyway? And to clarify, work that produces salvation is what you mean. He yes. wants us to do good. We're created to do good works. That's correct. To do good things that please Him. And He gives us the will, He says, the will to do good works in a way that pleases Him. He gives us that. That's right. The will and the ability. So and we are to do good works, but not to try to earn our salvation. No. And we have a helper. That's right. The Holy Spirit. That's right. The Holy Spirit helps us. That's right. And that's where, that, that's the posture. I, I don't know how to explain it, but other than, than looking at it as a posture where you look to God as God and Heavenly Father, we say that. Yeah. Jesus, when the disciples came to him, came to him and asked us, teach us to pray. He said, our Heavenly Father, hallowed be on thy name. That's right. Our Heavenly Father. Do we have a picture of that? Hmm. Our Heavenly Father. And, and I know, and I know, I know myself, many times I've said, I know, Father, we've, we've already talked about this. But can we kind of talk about it again? That's right. And so, and does he get tired of hearing from us? No. Never. He wants to hear from That's us. That's right. There's a, there's a thing called cognitive dissonance. We've talked about it before. Cognitive dissonance is relevant in the conversation about addiction and it's relevant in the conversation about all sorts of uh, behaviors but it's also relevant in this conversation a cognitive dissonance friend is this idea where you say one thing and you internally believe another thing and this is getting around to what we've been saying here we all sort of 
verbally and con- and and sort of uh, psychologically acknowledge the idea that God's paid for our sins and we're saved by grace. But at the same time, we sort of internally fear that we need to do more That's right. to convince Him to save us. That's right. right? Susie Larson has a quote about that, and she said, Our faith is our fuel, but actions give us traction. Nothing happens in the spiritual realm when we say one thing and believe another. We spin our wheels while the enemy has his heyday in our lives. Oh, yeah. And Satan is just waiting on us. That's right. And, and one of the things that I've learned to say is when, when I hear, him, hear from him, I just tell him. I don't rebuke him entirely. I just tell him, get out of my head, get out of my house, get away from my family, get That's behind right. me. That's right. That's what Jesus did. He told Satan to get behind him. That's right. It's two good examples of that. Um, Sarah and Lot from the Old Testament. We think of those Old Testament stories of Sarah, you know, convincing Abraham to have a child by Hagar and and um, playing the part that Abraham encouraged her of his sister instead of his wife and all that, the, the, the mistreatment of Hagar and Ishmael. We think yeah. of all those mistakes that she made. Yeah. And we think of Lot, you know, moving into Sodom and Gomorrah and, and getting corrupted by their culture and all that. And we judge them by their deeds. But you get over to Hebrews, and they're listed in That's Hebrews right. 11 in the Hall of Fame because of their faith. <laughs> That's right. Not because of their deeds. That's right. And not because of their mistakes, but because of their faith. That's right. And I think that's where we need to land. That's right. Well, it's just like I, I, always, I always think about when Abraham met uh, Methuselah. Yeah. Uh, what did, what did that, that encounter look like? Hey, bro, how are you doing? Huh? Right. You mean Melchizedek? Make Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gave him a tenth. A tenth Abraham of everything. Abraham gave him a tenth. Yeah. Because Melchizedek was prince and king. That's right. Prophet and king. Yeah. So yeah. Abraham honors him because he's Jesus. That's right. In the story. That's right. And that's right. So he has his faith in the right place in Jesus. That's how he knows his name is in the book. That's right. That is right. And that's where we want to be, in the book. That's right. So, if we're all in and we're looking for hope, the place to find it is to recognize that the toil and strain and the stress that we put on ourselves by trying to measure up or be good enough or do enough has not produced the kind of fruit that we want it to produce. It produces fatigue, it produces stress, it produces anxiety, and it does not produce holiness. What produces holiness is gratitude and a desire to honor God with our lives because He has already saved us. That's right. And being thankful. That's right. Gratitude. That's right. Being thankful. That's right. For just just Him noticing us and thanking Him for making a way for us. That's right. So Tata, if somebody's out there and they haven't made that decision yet, and they're listening and they're wondering if, how to get their name in the book, like what do you say to them today? What, you need to start today. You but what to, do they do? Like, you need what to do say they do? Yes. Say yes to Jesus. That's right. And ask Him to be Lord and Savior of their lives. Yeah. And you need to do it today. Why don't you lead us in just a prayer for somebody out there who's struggling and looking and seeking, and maybe now's the time. Maybe for the first time in your life you're ready to ask Him for that help. You want your name in there. Yeah. I just pray for that person. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Father, we, we give you thanks for this day that you have made and, and we rejoice in it. Thank you. Thank you for all of our blessings. Thank you for our food, clothing, and shelter. We're blessed in abundance. We have more than we need. We are blessed and highly favored. We're blessed beyond measure. Thank you for being mindful of us, watching over us, protecting us from harm, especially the little ones, Father. And Father, we, we just give you thanks and we give you praise because you are God and you are God Almighty and you are the only one worthy of our praise. You are Jehovah. You are Yahweh. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are a provider. You are Jehovah Rapha, the healer. So Father, we look to you. And Father, we are mindful that, that someone within the hearing of our voices is saying to themselves, I want my name in the book. How do I do that? So, Father, we'd ask that they be inspired today to say yes to Jesus. 
Yes, I believe that you're the Son of God. Yes, I believe you died for me. And yes, I want, I, you, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want to live my life to be pleasing to you, not pleasing to myself. And so, Father, we just wait on you because we trust you. We have confidence in you. But we ask you to please demonstrate your mighty power in our presence for your glory, not ours. Demonstrate, Father, that, that you are in control. Make sure that no one misses that. You've already sent Jesus, your one and only son, to die for us. But how soon we have forgotten. And maybe we don't, maybe someone doesn't even know. And, and, but there, and I can recall that there was times in my life when I did not know or did not feel like I knew what I needed to know. That you're in control. And so let us not be mindful of what's happening around us. Let's look to you. You are the author. Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. And he is now seated at your right hand, indicating that his work is done. And so we rely on you, Father. We trust you. We have confidence in you. We ask you now to please come. And we ask it all in the sweet and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, your Son and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tata. Well, we were going to have a theological discussion, but we had church service with an invitation. <laughs> now, we just need a song leader to get us out of here, don't we? <laughs> so, Tata, you already said the answer, but if somebody's going to make that decision, when would be a good time to do it? Make it th- today. You need to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery, drleewarren.substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarrenmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.